Hey guys, welcome to The Hot Johnson. This week we're going to be talking about how to listen to your body. Our body is kind of our our compass. Absolutely. And it can tell us so much in life. And if we're not listening to it, we're really missing out on some good messages. Absolutely. Yeah. I think, you know, one of my favorite questions that people ask is, is it your head that you should follow or your heart, your gut, your body? Mm. I think it's ultimately a combination of both. But the problem is that most people are stuck in their heads. Yeah. They're cut off from their body. Yes. So today we're going to talk a little bit about getting more in tune with your body. We're going to lead you through an exercise if you would like to join in where, yeah, we're going to connect to our bodies and, and tune in and see what it's asking for. And it's really come up for me recently in my life, this whole conversation was really inspired because um, I'm in school for counseling right now and we are doing a course currently on somatic therapy. Yes. And if you're not familiar with somatic therapy, really it's all about tuning into the body. And if you've been to traditional counseling where it's a little bit more talk therapy and it's all about, you know, kind of your thoughts and what's going on in your head. Somatic therapy is more of an approach where you actually tune in to sensations or feelings, anything that's going on in your physical body. You get really curious about what that part of your body has to say or what it wants to do. It's actually really fascinating. Mm. The things that can come to you from doing a body approach. Mm. And it's also great for a lot of people who don't want to talk about their past shit. Like if right. you, you know, don't mm. ma maybe want to relive your trauma or have to talk or think about things, sometimes we can just go in through the body and renegotiate the nervous system and help, help bring some more ease in that way. Absolutely. So what are yeah. the biggest things you're learning right now? Yeah. I think the biggest thing for me, like the whole theme of being in this class has really been about listening to your body and paying attention to what it's asking for. Mm -hmm. And it's just really made me realize, and I don't know if anybody listening or watching can relate to this, how often we can live our lives from a place of the shoulds, the things that we should be doing, the list of rules that we're supposed to be doing. Yeah, it's all these, these thoughts. And for me, I think a lot of that started, you know, we talked about in a previous episode, the body image stuff. For me personally, when I was a young girl, like in grade six, I started exercising and working out because I was the chubby kid who got bullied. And that kind of instilled this way of being where like, I didn't want to work out. I hated it. My body was like, Ugh, I don't want to do this, but it made me learn to kind of override and not listen to what was feeling good. And just feeling like, well, I'm not supposed to be the fat kid. So I should work out. I should eat this way. And that combined with, as a young person, getting love and attention for the things I achieved in life. Right. So it was like the times I was working hard and succeeding. And I feel like for a lot of us, we do live in this like grind culture. It's like the 5 a.m. club, grind, 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 because we're so, we attach so much value to being successful and achieving things. Outward success. Outward success. Yes which is great. Like it's not, nothing wrong with being successful, but if you're not also in tune with how it's feeling, that can lead to burnout for so many of us and living this life of just doing and pushing when really, is it really that fulfilling? Right. So perhaps one of the biggest first questions to ask yourself right now is do a little life scan in your relationships, your health, your career, and ask yourself, what am I giving my time and energy to that I feel like I should be doing mm -hmm. versus tuning into your body throughout your day, week, month, year, your whole life and asking yourself, what do I really want to be doing? And don't ask it through the filter of the head. Tune into your body. What is the wisdom of your body, your intuition, your authentic emotions mm -hmm. actually asking for in all of those areas? Yeah. And I love this because there are so many different areas where we can tune into our body. You know, uh, with my background in nutrition, I do this with clients sometimes where it's like when you every week go to get your groceries or even when you're sitting down to make a meal, it's like asking your body, like tuning in and being like, like, what do I feel like I want to eat this week? Right. And when you go to sit down and eat, like really paying attention, we can start to build this muscle for so many of us where we've been used to being in our heads all the time. It's like, how do you start to build that connection to how you feel in your body? It's like the little things of when you're sitting down to eat, you know, like maybe it's closing your eyes, taking some deep breaths and literally just like 
connecting to what you're putting in your mouth. Is it sweet? Is it bitter? Is it salty? Just like slowing it down and really being present and kind of just asking yourself, does this feel good? Do I like this? Do I feel like I should be eating this or am I actually enjoying it? Right. I feel like a big theme here with this somatic approach is slowing down. And as we were yeah. as we were talking about this topic, I was like, what's going to be the biggest question for people? And I think because I've had a lot of these conversations with my clients in session work is how do you know the difference between a narrative that's coming from like that traumatic response or that reactive response versus a deeper truth. So mm -hmm. truth versus trauma response. Mm -hmm. How do you differentiate? I have my perception and words on that, mm. but feel free to share first if you'd like. Yeah. Can you think of like an example? Yeah. Well, I mean, if you go out and you tell someone, just do what your body is really asking for. Yeah. They're like, well, I just want to lay in bed and eat Cheetos and watch yes. TV all day. Yes. You know, how do you differentiate yeah. the difference between what your body wants versus something like that that might be considered like a, a shadow mm -hmm. body response? Well, as somebody who is still in the midst of learning to find my relationship with this. Cause like I said, this came up in, in counseling class for me recently. And it's something that I still struggle with specifically when it comes to exercise, because so to bring it back to what you just said, my example of that has been, you know, like from a young age, I didn't want to work out, but it felt like this thing I had to do to be societally acceptable and attractive and, you know, loved by others. I had to lose weight. I feel like so many people, men and women, probably more women, mm -hmm. but definitely men too can relate to exactly that. Yeah. So then it's like feeling like the gym is a chore and something on the to-do list that you have to do. Mm. And if I'm being fully honest, like there is still an element of that for me. Mm -hmm. It's shifted a lot, but there is still a part of me that I have a tendency to go back to this pattern of, of pushing and driving, even if my body feels tired. Really what the whole process is all about is shifting from those reactive states of moving about the world and doing things that we think we should do. That's coming from a very reactive state. And so the process of moving down into the body is getting more still, building more self-awareness by building more curiosity, more presence with yourself to tune into that deeper, self-loving, authentic narrative of what you actually desire and want in any moment of any day. And I think a big part of that is learning to trust that. It's really interesting you said the word trust because that is something that I have, a, have had a hard time doing with my body. For me, if I let go of that kind of pushing and that control, then my fear is I'm just going to be a lazy sloth who eats everything. Yes. So many people can relate to that. So it's for me, that's honestly, or I'm going to be a loser or I'm going to fail, or I'm not going to be able to get the things that I need to yeah. do done. And I think the goal is, is there a more loving way we can motivate ourselves where it's not just like taking a, a ruler stick to like beating ourselves to go to the gym and eat the healthy foods. It's like taking a moment to actually try to connect to like your love for yourself, your vessel and being like, hey, I want to take care of this body. And sometimes it really does mean relaxing and turning on a movie that you genuinely want to enjoy yeah. and eating some pizza. Yeah. Sometimes it really is like that. Definitely. And I think that, and I love that earlier you said that it's like a muscle and it really is. In other mm -hmm. words, the more you practice tuning into the wisdom of your body, the stronger your connection grows, the stronger the muscle of that link between your awareness of what it's asking for, the better you'll be aware of what you really want. And sometimes mm -hmm. that looks like crushing it and doing the things that you that are on your to-do list. And sometimes it's like, I just need to rest. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that looks like a five minute rest. Sometimes that looks yeah. like a day. Sometimes for people, they'll be going through a cycle of their life where most of their life, life will be consumed by rest and sleep. And I'm talking about months or even years. I, I personally went through a period of my life where I had so much judgment of myself. This was in my early 20s when I was going through depression and what I would consider to be a spiritual shift. I slept so much. 
And thankfully back then I was introduced to a lot of intuitive work, which is Mm -hmm. very, very similar to like the somatic uh, approach. So there was definitely a part of me that had Mm -hmm. guilt and shame and judgment towards myself of like, why am I not, why am I not crushing it? Why am I not getting after it more? But the truth was, is like my body, my system, my being was going through a fucking upgrade, man. I needed to rest. The metaphor that I like to use and and listen to this metaphor and perhaps people out there can relate to this. Sometimes we need to cocoon. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need to rest and be that in that cocoon so that we can turn into the butterfly. Yeah, I love it. I was just thinking of, I've had it referred to me once before as like, we go through seasons. Yes. Sometimes we are in winter mode where we need to hibernate, especially if you've been through, you know, really big life transitions or a hard phase, you know, that is totally normal and to honor that. And then sometimes we're in our spring where we're like coming into that butterfly summer, we're in more energy active mode. So it's something, like I said, that for me, I honestly do still struggle with because I feel like I should always kind of be in that pusher, go get them, get her done mode. Mm. And where that has led me is burnout. burnout. So what's really coming up for me right now in light of that is perhaps what we really need to be talking about, not only in this episode right now, but as a society is really moving the definition of what it means to be a successful human <laughs> yes. being, Yes, which is moving from that narrative that your worth is tied to how much you get done in a day yes over to how much are you honoring your truth in any given moment yeah and being honest with that and the trust component building the trust component and it does take time trusting that the wisdom of your body knows what it wants when it wants it and that when you do follow that you will have more balance in life And the yardstick of how successful of a human being you are is more about how authentically joyful are you in every day. I remember at the beginning when I started my coaching business four years ago, I was burning out like crazy because I didn't understand how to create balance in my life with cultivating a new business. And I would burn out. And over the years, I've learned to listen to my body. Mm -hmm. I don't work when I don't want to work. Yeah, you're good at, I feel like you've mastered this a lot more than I have for sure. But that comes from practice and learning to trust my body. Yeah, You can have balance. You are allowed Mm -hmm. to rest. You are not, not only are you allowed to rest, but in the rest, you obviously recharge your batteries. And then you can crush when it's time to crush. And that's that's really what I say. Crush when it's time to crush. Rest when it's time to rest. Play when it's time to play. Yeah. Have fun when it's time to have fun. And I think that's the other thing. If we have gone through periods where we're overriding our body for a really long time, you know, whether that's with work, you're working too hard or like with food, if you're like, quote unquote, dieting or just eating in a way that doesn't feel good or you're pushing it too hard at the gym. In my experience, the pendulum then swings to the other side where you're just like, fuck it. I don't want to do any of this anymore. And that's where you have, I think for women who've struggled with eating and eating disorders, it's like you restrict, maybe you're not eating enough or eating properly or eating foods that your body is actually craving. And then you go to the other extreme where you're just like, give me all the food, Yeah, you know? Totally. So by living in those like extremes or pushing yourself to that extreme. It's just not, it's not a great way of being. And then when you swing to that other side, you obviously feel crappy about yourself. So, you know, it's about trying to find, as you said, that like happy balance of listening to your body. I think it's challenging sometimes when it's, when it's with food, because there are so many addictive, especially with processed foods in particular, you know, things that are made by man in factories and packages and that sort of thing. So I always say, like, if you want a nutrition tip, number one nutrition tip, try to eat as little packaged food as possible, like man-made foods that are in like cans or packages or made in a factory. Because, so not Twinkies? Uh, so not Twinkies. <laughs> because... Do you, I fucking hate Twinkies. I've literally so never gross. had a Twinkie. Eh, I've never had one. I had a had bite one. of one and it was... 
Rafflecopter. Ra- Rafflecopter. Yeah. yeah. How did I know you were going to say that? Well, because I go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but these companies literally put all of these chemicals into these foods to make us addicted to them. And so if that's a part of your regular diet, there is a reality to the chemicals in your brain. Like you're getting a dopamine hit from these foods and they are very addicting. So that is one I personally can very much so relate to. It's like my body feels like it wants these things is this my body wanting this? This is confusing. And I think that this is where perhaps we can bring in the conversation around sometimes it is important to use our cognitive brain to assess what is it that we want? Because sometimes the body is like sugar or, Mm -hmm. you know, any kind of addictive behavior that provides that dopamine hit. Sometimes we do need to stop and logically ask ourselves, is this coming from a place of truth or is this just a reactive pattern that I've seen in my life that's covering up something deeper within me right? that needs to be seen, heard, and understood? Yes. So like in those moments... (laughs) for me with the food. It's like, if I'm like, oh, I just want to like eat the pizza. It's stopping and tuning in and asking yourself, what do I actually need right now? What is this pizza, this food, whatever it is that you're going to, what is this actually providing for me? Is it safety? Is it a friend? Is it pleasure? Do you actually just like need a hug? What is a maybe perhaps another way of having that need met and you know by if the reaction that you get from that question if it's coming from that place of reactiveness you know that it's it's coming from like a wounded place yes that that's a better way of saying so you're it. saying so in that moment when you ask yourself like do i really what do i really want right now do i really need this if you have like a reactive response yeah if it feels like that like needy energy like huh. i need i i need it and it's it's that <laughs> like yeah. give it to me yeah. as opposed to stopping and coming from a <sighs> deeper place of like self love yeah. as you're presenting right now that's yeah it's hard to do it's, it's hard to do <laughs> but that's the it's practice so Rewarding. It's so rewarding. And let's talk about the benefits. The benefits is a more regulated life. Yeah. You take your power back because yeah. when you're we're living in that reactive state, whether we're talking about needing to create success in our career or needing sugar or needing sex, needing a partner, we take our power back from all those things mm-hmm. and recognize that you already have every single thing that you could ever need or want in your life within you. And when you, the more you practice that, the more you recognize that the pizza, the relationships, sometimes the occasional donut or even the healthier stuff, going out and starting a business, crushing it in your career, finding the love of your life, eating healthy food, it, all of that just becomes the cherry on top of your Sunday, Mm -hmm. the Sunday being your regulated life. The biggest theme I'm, I'm seeing throughout all of this episode is learning how to move from reacting from your head in the world to learning how to stop, tune into the body, listen to what it's really needing and asking for and practicing trusting that yeah. and following that. Yeah. Even when your head judges you, f- judges you for what it's asking for. If you find the judge coming up, stop and like challenge that judgment and really get deeper, more curious. Mm -hmm. And regardless of what behavior you, you do, whether it's the reactive one or the one that's coming from a truth, let's have compassion for ourselves. We're all learning. We're all learning how to have deeper self-awareness. And at the end of the day, it's all good just do the best you can. And that's really all we can ever ask of ourselves. I had two thoughts as you're saying that the one where you're talking about trusting yourself, what comes to my mind is in those moments where you're not trusting yourself, asking like, what is the fear under this? Mm. So for me, mm-hmm. I've acknowledged mm-hmm. that the times where I'm like, feel like I have to go to the gym, right? What is under that? What right. is the thought that is under that? There is a fear that I need to go, that I should go. Because if I don't, I'm going to gain weight. I'm not going to be lovable. I'm not going to be accepted. Right. So asking that of yourself, those moments where you feel like I should be doing this. Why? And is it true? Is that in reality? If yeah. 
you don't do it, is that thing going to happen? Yeah. And think about that with your motivations around relationships and career too. all of the shoulds around those topics of your life. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself why and what is the fear if I don't? That's a great question Mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. And then the other thing when you were saying to trust, like as you're saying that, I'm like, I still have a hard time trusting myself. So if you are similar to myself in those moments, what I try to do or what is helpful, because like I said, I could easily just be like, go full sloth mode where I don't exercise. I eat all the things. So we already talked about, you know, just tuning into your body and being like, what do I actually want? What do I actually need right now? And to take it a step even further, which we've, you know, talked about doing in the past. And it can always be helpful to try to just connect to your inner child. Mm. And be like, what is what is the inner, what is the little Danae or whatever your name is, <laughs> fill in the blank. What is little me actually want and need right now? Yeah. And sometimes by connecting to that, that can help give us a more authentic answer. Absolutely. Yeah. Shall you? That's beautiful. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Shall we lead them through an exercise mm-hmm. now? Yeah. So this is going to be the hot offer this week. We're going to take you guys through just like a little bit of a meditative exercise right now. We're going to get you to connect to your body if it feels safe and okay to do so. I know for some people that doesn't feel like an okay thing to do, but if it does, feel free to find a, a comfy spot right now. Um, whether you're in your chair, you're laying down, I'm going to get comfortable here as well. <sighs> and just start by taking some deep breaths, closing your eyes if it feels okay to do so, taking some deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth, feeling your shoulders drop, maybe your chair holding you and your back up against the back of the chair, your feet grounded and rooted on the floor, feeling the earth beneath you supporting you. And as you breathe, and tune into your body. Just being curious if there's anywhere in your body that is speaking to you right now. Maybe do a little body scan. Is there anything that's lighting up? And if there is, tuning into that part of your body. And with this exercise, we're gonna explore that sensation a little bit. So as you tune into that part of your body, just being curious, does it have a temperature? Does it have a size? Is it big? Is it small? Is there a sensation that goes along with it? Is it sharp? Is it rigid? What does it feel like? it have a color and as you continue to tune into that is there anything that part of your body is asking for if it could speak if it had words what would it be communicating to you and it's really as simple as that You know, if we're in session together and navigating through a somatic journey and experience, we can go a lot deeper with that and really explore it. And it can go to some pretty interesting places, but even just like little practices like that, just little snippets like that, where it's like, maybe it's a sensation in your gut that feels knotted and just bringing some attention to that and asking it what it needs. Like maybe it needs to be rubbed. Maybe you realize that's one of the biggest things I've realized is like how much tension I hold in my stomach. My stomach is always in knots. And I remember over the last number of years, I'd go to yoga classes. And as soon as I'd like sit down and start breathing, I'd be like, oh my God, I have a stomach ache. But I always had a stomach ache and it was just because I wasn't in tune with my body all the time. So it's like the more we can just have these just little mini moments try and have them throughout your day of just being aware of what's going on in your body are you holding somewhere are you tightening are your shoulders up is your jaw clenched yeah like what does that part of your body needs need and maybe it is just to like oh like take a deep breath and bring some ease to that part i'm curious for you as we did that is there anything in your body that it was really fun actually for me yeah it was uh 
my head came up oh. and it was like this like little guy that was like, you're great. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm in a really positive state these days. So. I love that. Yeah. That's amazing. For yeah. me, it's like it's the tension in my body. It's my it's my gut. It's my pelvic area. Like for so long, and for anybody out there who has chronic pain, it's so easy to disassociate and disconnect from your body. And right. for a lot of us who've had trauma, it's also very easy to disconnect from our bodies because our bodies don't feel safe. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's been a very interesting journey for me to get. I find a lot of the times when I connect to my body, I just feel angry because I have a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. But then there's, oh, that makes me a bit emotional. Yeah. Um, but then it's so interesting, like the body, our body is our friend, you know, it's like for so many of us, we've just lived our lives where we're like expecting so much of our bodies and we're pushing it. And it's like our body is here to serve us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, we take care of it mm -hmm. and once again, motivate ourselves from a loving, instead of just whipping it like a horse, like, can we just like take care of it? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's been such a fascinating journey for me as this pain and these things that have shown up in my body, it's led me down a whole new healing path mm -hmm. that I would never have thought to have gone down mm -hmm. if it didn't show up in my body. Mm -hmm. So Good for you. it's like for anybody out there listening, our pain, the things that show up in our physical body can also be a real messenger of what needs to be addressed. Sometimes things show up in our body without having a cognitive awareness of it. Yeah. So thanks so much for hanging out with us, guys. I hope this episode was helpful in some way. And I hope that, you know, in this next week or so, I mean, ideally even longer than that, but to just bring some mindfulness to your body. What's it saying to you? What's it asking for? And above all, be gentle. Be gentle. Okay, love you. We love you. Yeah. Yeah, love you too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was Thanks, saying it guys. to you, but I also say it to everyone out there who's listening. We I love you. I give that shout out loud to everybody. Hey. We love you long time. Love you guys. Okay, bye. Bye.